Right then, we've been having a lot of debate in the office about which wheels we've put on, what size tyres we've put on. I did the test fitting over in the body shop, not sure if we put that video on now or before, but basically I test fitted a wheel off my Tureg with the 33s and a wheel off, I think it was Craig's Tureg, the V10. I can't remember where I got the wheel from anyway, but it was, it was one of these. And the 32s will pretty much go straight on. We might have to just massage the front where the intercools are as we do on all of them. But if we want the 33s, it would be the usual chopping all the chassis and messing about. I didn't really want to mess about like that if I could. So that then narrowed down the tyre choice. We couldn't get the Renegades in the size we wanted, in the time scale we wanted. So we've ended up going for the big horns again, which we've had a lot of good luck with these. I liked them when I had them on my V10. They're definitely better than, than the Renegades in the mud and not tons noisier and definitely not as noisy as them horrible things Scott's got, the Nitto mud grapple Scott's got on his Tureg. But yeah, good compromise. So we're going to get these fitted. We've not got it here with us, but we'll produce it at some point. We've got some roof rails to go on and a tent box classic that's going on. And then as you can see, there's five wheels here and I don't want to put the other one on the roof, obviously, because we've not got a cargo. So we've got something that we're just cooking up at the minute that we're going to hopefully be selling. Um, but it'll take the spare wheel, and I think everybody will be happy with that. And it should be a bit universal. And I know I've got, I want one for mine. Craig wants one for his V6. The other Craig's V10 is sold that now, so he'll not be wanting anything. Um, okay, and we'll yeah, and we could put it on the Yeti if we want to, so we'll see. So we'll get these fitted and then we'll have a play um, with the roof tent and all that stuff. I'm not sure when I'm going to get round to doing that because these wheels and tyres have just arrived and the workshop looks like a bomb site at the minute, so maybe it'll be today, I don't know, we'll see. First job, that on there. Well then. So, wheels are on, I think they look pretty good, so it's in the sort of auto mode so it's quite low at minute and it's probably got a leak on airbags somewhere so it's probably lower than it should be, but front ones, not happy, rear ones fit fine, if you have a look here, I'll fire it up and you'll see what the problem is. So you could see we've got quite a bit of contact at the back and a bit of contact at the front but we have got like a 20 mil spacer on here so i think they sit just nice how they are but clearly we can't have them sticking out much we are chopping and 
attacking stuff. So I've got some thinner spacers here. This, well, this is one of. This is from my Tureg when I had the standard wheels on. So I'm going to put that on and see if it still catches as bad. And then if it's still catching, I'll take them off completely and see, uh, and see how we get on. So stick with us. Evening. Evening. Tell us I don't a bit about your mullet. You haven't got to be that close, have you? Tell, tell us a bit about your mullet. So I've been growing it about five months. As you can see, it's uh, coming on a little bit. Better than a lot of people's haircuts who work oh, at Dark Side. Can I talk about my belly as well? Yeah, that's about it. I've still eaten it, I think. Yeah, so back to Dark Side HQ. Right then, people, so. Um, Ryan's not in today, no, no, to be fair, nobody's in today. So I've come down um, today just to uh, install these roof bars on the V8. So I've got them all laid out here, I'm going to take this spare wheel off the roof. So today I'm uh, banging a temp box classic on the V8. Shouldn't really take too long, but there's a bit of swapping and chucking to do, so yeah. So we'll see how it goes. So I've just got a spare wheel off roof. Nice and easy, apart from it was absolutely wet through. I've caught water last night, so yeah, wet through for day, so. Right, so we've got both bars on, it took a bit longer than we thought, because my mate Ruben here <laughs> said he was coming down earlier to help me, but he, he's made out he's not, so we're on for a winner now anyway. So we've got roof bars on, so I've just been to get the tent box classic that'll be going on the V8. It's currently on my van at the minute, which is here. So we'll just get it unbolted and we'll uh, get on the beast. So I've got the tent on, Ruben's helped me, Danny's helped me as well because it was a bit of a nightmare, it took a bit longer than I expected. So we'll look now, we've got the V8 all kitted out ready for camping. So that's it, that's the tent box installed on the V8, ready to rock and roll. So I know my limitations, we're in the fab shop, Dan's going to sort this out, so we've actually got a working vehicle. So looking at this, this body kit's not helping us either, we should have done all this when it were all off, but it looks like even with a 32 inch tyre, with the offset of the wheel and stuff that we need to have for it to look good. I think if you have standard archers, you get away with no spacers and it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But we're gonna have to trim this down a little bit, chopping, which is gonna be hard while keeping that good. So Dan's gonna struggle his way through that. It'll be all right though in the end. And then I took the arch line right at the minute, but we're just rubbing. I don't know if it's damaged this bit, just what we're doing. I'd assume so, to be fair, because that weren't like that when uh, I took it off. So I think there's been a, full, a few uh, too much locks going on this, but we just need to obviously trim that bit off and just push this into cooler further forward. So Dan's going to get the front off, have a quick look and see what's what. But as usual with any of our projects, we do everything two or three times before we actually get it how we want it. So the bumper's coming off again, which is annoying because I know it were a pain to get off in the first place. So hopefully get it sorted.
So, we're outside now because we've got another car to get in the fab shop. We finally figured out how to get handbrake off that. Yeah. Whoa! Jesus Christ, I thought we were going to hit that jig then. Anyway. Absolutely off the head. When you're looking at a blue dot all day, that's what it does to you. So, Dan's got it sorted. We've got the big spacers on, which is what we wanted. He's chopped and capped these off and didn't record much of what he was doing. So, sorry about that. We've had to chop the back of the arch out as well. And then at the front here, we've had to take all this bit, all this bit of the arch away and move the intercoolers forward. Now, I've not got much to show you there, but this is a bracket that, I don't know which way around it goes. It goes one of these ways. We bolt that to the front of the slam panel, chop the old bracket off and pull it forward and bolt it up with this, which we'll be selling. And then that pulls it away from the wheel. So now we are really close. I think we've got like a 20 mil spacer on our wheels and these are quite a low offset. So I think they're like running like ET10 or something like that now. So these stick out a fair bit. If you haven't got these arches, which this is a stupidly expensive body kit that just came on car, you're not going to need to poke them out as much anyway, so you probably get away with a bit less chopping, a bit less trimming, you might get your arch liners back in. But that's for you to sort out, not for us at the minute. So these are on. And then, as you can see, we've got a not very clean Tent Box Classic on there. So George has done me a bit of a deal. I'd got two Tent Box Cargos, because I've got the old style, which we're going to go on this. And then I've got the new one, which is going to go on my Tureg, which I had a chance to do yet. But he said he wanted the cargo for his caddy van for a picture of what they all look like together. But basically, I've got this classic one now. I think I might go camping in it this weekend. I'm not too sure because we're going to go to Silverstone and me and George need somewhere to stay. Rather than staying in an hotel and being posh like Scott likes to be, we might stay in the tent. We'll see. I'll decide. I just need to use this before I decide, but I'm not going home in this because I'm going home in the Luton van to get some fuel. So anyway, we're... Um, we're pretty much sorted with this as far as wheels and tyres and getting them to fit's concern. The intercools are moved, so we should, in theory, be able to go off-roading in this now. Whether we try and get some more stuff done beforehand, I'm not too sure. We've definitely got an air leak on the suspension that needs fixing. A couple of other little bits that I'd like to do before we go, and I really would like to get a body lift kit sorted for this, but that's Rob's next job. Forgot to mention, Gig did a D-chrome, but as you can see, they didn't know how to use GoPros as good as they know how to do wrapping. So, we just basically got them turning camera off. Nathan's managed to get this receiver hitch spare wheel carrier sorted. This one's pretty nice. I think we're going to change the angle a little bit and move it in a bit, but that's just for the Mark II Tureg. This one's actually the one off the Mark III Tureg, so, uh, sorry, the Mark I Tureg, Mark III. This is off the Mark II. It Mark, oh God. This is off the Mark I. So we're going to put this one back on and sort it all out, but this one has got a nice little feature. I hope. Them pins are going to be dead. I always forget. So this one's got a nice little table on, which is going to be optional if we do sell these. 
and my little tool burner should just fit nicely on there then you can have all your stuff in your boot or whatever you. should work pretty good so that'll be nice a little bottle opener as well so we bought these in obviously we've not made these in house but the other good thing with this as well we're still going to sort the number plate situation out that'll be added on to the end of this video i'm sure but the other good thing with these the boot is empty on this you can still put your little towing chap in there you go just need another pin for that you put that in there i wouldn't want to use it as a tow have the tow bar in there as well i think it's strong enough tow but i wouldn't want to do it unless the trailer were empty um, so what we'll do if i think we're going to be towing with this one depending if the new trailer module comes for mine before we need it but we just have to take this off and just throw it in the vehicle that we're towing or put it on the trailer or whatever just to keep it safe for that and then we'll throw it back in when we're sorted so we shall see yeah these need galvanizing and then powder coating which we'll just get them done black and then they should do what we need to do so we'll uh, we'll get these tailpipes sorted and then this is ready for wales i believe So, V8 exhaust, Mark has sorted it. I think these tips, I'd like something a little bit bigger, but it's all we had in stock that we could make in the time that we got. We didn't want to start making any twin tips, but we do want to get another V8 Tuareg in before we sort of finalise this. We can sell them and we know they're pretty much going to fit, but the standard tips that were on this have been act away that much that we can't be sure that everything's exactly right but if not we'll sell it as a full kit with some tips obviously twin tips are a lot more expensive because they're going to take a lot more to uh, sort out but yeah that's on hopefully the whistle's gone away which maybe we'll put a clip in if we get chance maybe we won't but almost certainly that will be gone it doesn't really sound any loud when you're revving it so not really too uh, worried about that we'd have to get rid of all the emissions equipment to make it sound a lot noisier but it looks a ton better really happy we are it looks um, and then the other thing we've sorted we've got the number plate third brake light and a number plate light on here for the spare wheel carrier and then that plugs in to where your tow bar would normally plug in this car's going to be towing the trailer with a yeti on so we're coming up with a solution to mount this on the trailer as we speak and then we can put the tow bar in here and away we go which I'm a bit gutted that the electrics are not working on my car for the towing because I'd like to uh, I like to tow the trailers down because I've done plenty of towing everybody else is a little bit more um, inexperienced should we say so we'll see I'd like to see how this tows I might jump in this and have a tow just to see what it feels like because I want to know what this tows like I know it's meant to be good, but I'd like to see what it tows like now and, what the, and we'll have a try and do a bit of a test on the efficiency on everything as well so we'll see and uh, yeah, see us in Wales.